This video will discuss how to apply for financial aid and the different financial aid options. The correct website to apply for financial aid is studentaid.gov. There is also a mobile app you can use if you prefer. Our school code for your FAFSA is 011948. If you have any questions, you may contact our office or the Department of Education at 1-800-4-FED-AID. The first thing you need to do is create a user ID and password. This is created on the same website. This serves as your legal signature on your FAFSA. If you are required to have parent information listed on your FAFSA, a parent must also create a user ID and password. Student and parent IDs cannot be the same, and you will use these IDs every year when you apply for the FAFSA. The FAFSA is used by the Department of Education to determine financial aid eligibility. When it has been completed, it will give you an estimated Pell Grant amount. This award is based on full-time enrollment, which is 12 credit hours. Pell Grants are prorated if you are not full-time. The FAFSA must be renewed each academic year, which starts in the fall. The FAFSA application opens up for the next academic year on October 1. Tax returns from two years ago will be used when completing the FAFSA. It will list the tax return year you are to use on it. After you submit your FAFSA, you will receive notification from each school that you listed on it, letting you know they have received your application. Some students can be chosen for random verification, so you need to return any additional documents the financial aid office requests from you in a timely manner. Once eligibility has been determined, you will receive an award notification. Each student who receives federal financial aid must adhere to a satisfactory academic progress policy. For the qualitative standard, a student must earn a term and overall GPA of 2.0. The quantitative standard says a student must complete 67% pace of attempted credit hours each term and overall. The time frame component of the policy says a student must finish their program within 150% time frame of the published length of their program. Grades of withdrawal, incomplete, failed, administrative withdrawal, and audit also count as attempted hours in your time frame calculation. For example, the Associate of Arts degree in general education is 60 credit hours times 150% equals 90 credit hours to finish that degree. Students who receive federal financial aid must also attend classes through the 60% point of each semester. Otherwise, a student may owe a refund to the school or to the Department of Education. The same policy also discusses a few of the different financial aid statuses. A student will be placed on a warning if they do not meet the 67% pace or the 2.0 GPA requirement. A student will be placed on a suspension status if they do not meet the pace or GPA requirements again after the warning period. Students will be placed on a time frame suspension status if they do not graduate within the 150% time frame of their program. Suspended students do not qualify for any federal financial aid. If you filed a FAFSA and made at least a 19 on the ACT, one of the state scholarships you can apply for is the Arkansas Academic Challenge Scholarship through the Arkansas Department of Higher Education. The website is scholarships.adhe.edu and the deadline is July 1. This scholarship is $500 per semester the first year and $1,500 per semester the second year. A 2.5 GPA is required and traditional students must be enrolled in at least 12 hours the first semester and starting with their second semester, they must be enrolled in at least 15 hours every semester. Non-traditional students must be enrolled in at least six hours. Students can also apply for our foundation scholarships on the BRTC website. The deadline is March 1. You must be a full-time student and earn a 3.0 GPA each semester. These scholarships are $1,000 per semester for one year. 
We also offer institutional scholarships based on your ACT score. Our office will accept scores for first-time students until the week before the fall classes start. If you scored at least a 24 on your ACT, or if you graduated in the top 10% of your class, you qualify for our Academic Distinction Scholarship. This scholarship covers full tuition up to 16 hours each semester for two years. Students must complete 15 hours each semester and earn a 3.0 GPA. If you scored a 19 to a 23 on the ACT, you will qualify for our Academic Incentive Scholarship. This one is $250 each semester for two years. Students must complete 12 hours each semester and earn a 2.0 GPA. Student loans are an option if you need to borrow money to pay for your classes. Entrance loan counseling and a master promissory note must be completed online before a loan will be processed. To qualify for a student loan, the student must also be enrolled in at least six credit hours, and if you are taking fast track classes, at least six of those credit hours must have started before a loan will be dispersed. Our office must have a completed FAFSA on file for you. You must also be making satisfactory academic progress according to the policy discussed earlier in this presentation. A first-time student must wait 30 days before their first loan disbursement. Loans are dispersed two times each semester, and the second one must come after the midpoint of the semester. Also, a student cannot be in default on any previous student loans. Exit Counseling provides important information to prepare you to repay your federal student loans. If you have received a subsidized, unsubsidized, or PLUS loan under the Direct Loan Program or the FELL Program, you must complete Exit Counseling each time you drop below half-time enrollment, which is six credit hours, you graduate, or you leave school. Ideally, exit counseling is conducted one-on-one -on -one with your default prevention specialist, but there are certain situations where it is acceptable to complete it online. The website you would use to complete it online is www.studentaid.gov. A confirmation email will be sent to you once it's completed. Student Loan Repayment Options First, it is important to know who services your student loans. You can visit the National Student Loan Data System, NSLDS, at the following website, and you can see a complete history of your student loans, beginning balance, list of servicers, and contact information. Your loan servicer can help you figure out what repayment option is best for you in your circumstances, whether it be an income-driven repayment plan, career-based forgiveness program, or extended repayment plan. There are several options to choose from. Deferment and forbearance options temporarily postpone your payments under special circumstances, such as returning to school, a loan forgiveness application review, or unemployment. You can apply directly for these on your Student Loan Servicer website. Student Loan Default Do not default on your student loans. Default is the term used for failure to pay your student loans. The federal government will impose serious consequences in an effort to collect student loan payments, including, but not limited to, high collection fees and interest, negative credit rating scores, wage garnishment, lien on tax refunds, employment risks, legal action for outstanding balance, and loans are not included in bankruptcy filings. If your loans are currently in default, please contact the Department of Education at 1-800-621-3115 to begin the process of rehabilitation. Please call or email your BRTC Financial Aid Office with any questions pertaining to financial aid.